Good evening, good evening. God bless you, everybody. Pray that all is well with you and you having a God-blessed Monday afternoon. Happy Midday Monday to everybody. Come on in, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I choose to rejoice. I make the decision to rejoice and be glad in it. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. Good evening to everybody. Happy Midday Monday to you. What a day. What a day. What a day. This weather, guys, I'm telling you, it's hot one minute, cool the next. It's like, mm, just don't know what to expect. So, as I said to you guys before, um, keep your warm clothes handy and, and you know what I'm saying, enjoy the weather, but keep your warm clothes handy because you just never know what this weather going to do. This North Carolina weather, y'all know how it is when you um, used to dealing with North Carolina weather. <laughs> and we're born and raised here, so we know how the weather can get. Um especially in the city, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, hey, guys, I'm back in the saddle again. Um, this is Mr. Favor, and I'm back. And um, good evening to everybody that's coming in. God bless you, Brother Lamar. Pray that all is well with you and your family. Happy Midday Monday. What's up to my brother, Brother Kenny Sorrell? <laughs> what up, Kenny? <laughs> Good evening to you. Happy Midday Monday to you. Pray that all is well with you. Good evening to you, Sister Gloria Kears. God bless you. Happy Midday Monday to you. And I pray that all is well with you. Um, Just um, had to pull over here. I'm uh, headed to uh, dump a load, but I had to pull over to make the Midday Monday Nugget video. Didn't want to be late. Uh, thank you, sir. Good evening to you. First off, I want to say uh, happy belated Mother's Day. I pray that all the mothers had a wonderful, wonderful day on yesterday. Uh, God bless all of the mothers. We were able to honor the mothers at the temple on yesterday, both there, th those that are, were there uh, in person, as well as those that were watching online. Um, we wanted to honor our mothers. Mothers are precious gifts. They are precious gifts. Uh, thank God for mothers. Um, God blessed, uh, uh, me and my family to be able to honor our mother on yesterday. And it's just, it's just a blessing to have your mother still here. Amen. Our father has gone on to be with the Lord. He's been gone for many years, and but God has blessed our mother to still be here among the land of the living and still be here with us, clothing in her right mind, uh, activity of her limbs. She's in good health and still going strong for mm -hmm. the Lord. So uh, that means such a lot. That means a lot. Um, and also, good evening to you, Mother Leota Kiss. God bless your mother. Pray that all is well. Happy Midday Monday to you. Um, and so it was just a great, great time. And I pray that you all had uh, wonderful moments with your mothers. And we also want to, uh, as I shared with the church on yesterday, we also want to uh, honor and commemorate all the mothers that uh have gone on and is no longer here with us. Uh, we don't ever want to forget the memory and the life and the legacies of those precious mothers. And also we want to pray for families who may have uh, lost that loved one, that mother or grandmother, or big mama, you know what I'm saying? That was taking care of everything and everybody. And uh, it's just, uh, a blessing and a lot of people even though we had a great number of people that was celebrating and honoring their mothers there were some that were grieving 
There were some that were hurting and in pain because of the loss of their mother. So let us be sensitive um, to those who no longer have their mother here. Um, many mothers are in prison. They are uh, disconnected from their children and their families. And so it is just a hard time for a lot of people and a lot of families. So let us consider um, that uh, as well. Um, in a lot of cases, a lot of kids and families don't know where the mothers are. Um, so let's pray for them as well. Um, it's, it's a very emotional time. Uh, for different families and, 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 and what have you. So let us continue to uh, lift them up as well. Um, but um, just want to take a moment to just say that to all the mothers and families. And uh, we know that Father's Day is coming up and uh, we want to do the same thing for fathers as well to honor those fathers, uh, both present and absent, um, that have died and gone on. We want to honor them as well. So let us continue to pray one for another. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get to the nugget today so I can get back on the road. Um, <laughs> I still got quite a bit to do, but, um, um, but the day is a great day. Um, it's a very uh, productive day. Um, Y'all know my motto. I, you know, being busy is one thing, but being productive is another. Uh, we want to be productive people. You know what I'm saying? Just because you're busy don't mean you're being productive. Always remember that. So we're grateful to God for just everything uh, going on and happening. And uh, so... Um, Again, I want to say good evening to everybody. Uh, good evening to everybody that's coming in. Happy Midday Monday to you and happy belated Mother's Day to all the mothers. Uh, I forgot to send that out last Monday. So guys, please forgive me, but I forgot to send out a happy Mother's Day shout out when before I left the live last Monday night. <laughs> and so please charge it to my head and not my heart. And, uh, but, um, I want to get to the nugget today. Um, Mr. Favor got a nugget today. Just want to good evening to you. Shonda Pilson. God bless you. Happy midday Monday to you as well as Courtney Leggett. What's up, Courtney? What's happening? Little sister. God bless you. Good evening to you to my mother. Vangelis Rita Austin, God bless your mom. Happy Midday Monday to you. Pray that all is well with you. And uh, so I want to get to this nugget. Um, you know, here lately, um, I've been getting a lot of people who have been um, uh, calling me up and asking me questions. Uh, uh, a lot of people are really tuning in to these nuggets. And uh, they are um, kind of applying them and, and they're seeing a change and a difference in their, their businesses and in their lives and their personal life because these principles work across the board. But here lately, I've been getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of people asking me questions concerning how do I get started in business? Um, what are the steps that I take to get in business? Um, how much, how much, how much money do I need and all of that kind of stuff. But this is the, this is the concern that a lot of people have when they, um, share these desires and things with me. But one of their greatest concerns is based upon what other people are telling them. Um, um, just the other day, uh, I ran into a, 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 a lady that was at the rock quarry and she been driving, she been driving for someone, for other companies for many, many years. And so now she wants to branch out and she wants to get her own truck and do her own thing. 
and she, you know, she knows a lot of people. And so it won't be hard for her to get started as far as like getting uh, work or whatnot. But one of the things that she shared with me was, which a lot of people have shared with me was, there's a lot of people who try to be negative towards the idea of going in business for yourself. And so here lately, I've been getting a lot of people approach me with that. And um, I just want to say uh, to that, you know, guys, those of us that are in business, let us not be so negative, you know, let us not be so discouraging, um, especially when we should be able to relate to them. Uh, uh, and, 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 and keep in remembrance of how it was that when we first got started, um, a lot of people said the same things to us, um, try to discourage and try to put fear in you and try to make you feel, uh, as if, um, you can't make it, or it's just so hard out here, you know? And, and, and we've been down that road. Many people, uh, did not have the, the luxury to be born into business. You know, there are some people, they are born into business. Uh, they are raised into business. So, you know, their parents were already in a particular business. And so all they had to do was just get their CDLs, uh, uh, get the credentials or certifications that they needed. And, uh, and, uh, all, I mean, the way was already made. I mean, the door was already open. The provision was already there. So all they had to do was just, just walk in it or step into it. Whereas other people, they had to start from little, a uh, little, a little to nothing. Um, uh, or, you know, hard work, sacrifice, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, everybody did don't have that luxury, you know, to have a family member or, or somebody who's already in business and already have, um, trucks or, uh, uh, equipment that they can, you know, let a person use to get started or, or, or set a person up. Um, everybody don't have that luxury. Um, good evening to you. Uh, my brother, brother Brian Barr, what's happening, B? What's going on, brother? Happy midday, Monday to you. You pray that all is well. And so a lot of people don't have that. You understand what I'm saying? So we, we have to be, uh, considerate and sensitive. And I, I'm so amazed that so many business owners who, who don't even have a desire to help somebody and to give back. I mean, are we that self-centered? Are we that greedy? Are we that selfish? To where we can't even give somebody um, kind advice or or try to uh, link them with somebody who can help them to get uh, to the place where they're trying to go. Are we are we that insecure uh, within business to where we see everybody as competition? Um, what I mean, what 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 are we? Why do we, why are we so negative and why are we so discouraging when it comes to other people? So that, that, that's a concern for me because I've been getting a lot of people approach me with this. And so when, uh, 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 uh hey, how you doing, Missionary T? Good evening to you. Happy midday Monday to you. Pray that all is well with you and, and, and your family. Uh, good, God bless you. Uh, Elder Elder Leslie, good evening to you. Pray that all is well with you as well. So uh, happy midday Monday to the both of you. Um, so um, so I began to encourage the young lady um, and began to tell her, I said, you know, if it's something that you want to do and you really, um, uh, 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 you really feel that it's your time, uh, go for it. And she said, she said, you think so? I said, I said, go for it. Um, if, if it's something that you want to do, go for it. Because my belief is this, 
if you are going to do this for a career, if you're going to do this for a living, why not work for yourself? Okay. And so she was like, well, you know, I've been driving for this company. I drove for this company and I've been with this company for many years. So I, I know a lot of people. I got a lot of experience. I said, well, listen, if that's what you want to do, go for it. And, uh, and then she began to tell me that a lot of people was trying to discourage her and tell her not to do it. And, 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 and man, you, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't all what you think. And, and then, um, she said this, that really, that really the straw that broke the camel's back. She said, it's amazing how all of these people are telling me not to do it and not to get in business and, it's a bad idea. She said, but every time I turn around and look on Facebook, they traveling, they, they out of town, uh, they showing off their new cars and they showing off that they own, they own cruises and, and, and they taking, uh, exotic trips and all that. And she said, it's funny because if the business is so bad, and it ain't, it ain't all what it seems. How come every time I turn around, they posting something on Facebook? I said, exactly. My point exactly. And I said it, and I told her, I said, and if it was so bad, why they still doing it? Why they still in it? Why they haven't closed the door and call it quits and start doing something else? Okay. It's all in your network. It's all in who you know, and you, and I tell people all the time, you are responsible for advertising your business. You are responsible. Um, if you want your business to get out there, you got to get out there and make yourself available and, and you got to create business friendships. Now there is a difference between personal friendships and business friendships, but I believe that it takes a combination of both. You got to have a personal relationship uh, at some level who you have business relationship with. OK, now it doesn't mean um, because, you know, for instance, I give you an example. I know a lot of people personally, but I also deal with, uh, shall I say, I know a lot of people personally. Right. But everybody that I know personally I don't do business with. And there are people that I do business with. I don't always hang out with. Um, you got to have boundaries and you got to have uh, you got to have a, a, a standard when it comes to business. And so um, I believe when you are in business, your whole mindset has to change. You got to change your whole mindset. Uh, you got to get rid of that homie, homeboy, all that kind of stuff. You got to get rid of that mentality when you in business. OK, and I think I see it all the time. A lot of business owners, they their their personal relationships uh, with people is greater than them trying to make business relationships. So when it comes to personal Oh, they got friends, right? But when it comes to business, they don't have no connections. They don't have nothing outside of what they have. Like, let's say, let's say they got work over here. Well, if they got access to work here, that's all they got. Because they don't have no business relationships with anybody else outside of this personal relationship that they that they that they deal with on a regular basis. That's not good because what that does that restricts and limits the the potential of your business because now you are only you you are only successful over here. So if success um success is not producing over here then you have nowhere else to go in order to continue to produce because you did not take the time 
to make business relationships and business friendships outside of your personal relationships. And don't ever, 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 ever. This is another, this is another part of the nugget. And I got to go. Uh, good evening to you, brother Bear Void. God bless you. Good evening to you. Happy midday Monday. Don't ever, ever, uh, uh, form an opinion of a, of a potential opportunity for you to build a business relationship based upon what somebody else say about the person that you seek to do business with. Um, and, and don't, don't allow what somebody else has to say negatively about this particular person or this particular company. Don't allow what they think to dictate to you how you go about building a business relationship with this person or this company, because I've seen it too many times, guys. I've seen it too many times. People go off of what somebody else say about a certain person and they don't get to know the person for themselves and they miss out on opportunities and blessings and, 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 and all kinds of, 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 of things that God can use. See, 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 believers, let me talk to you. Saints of God, believers, our mentality, mentality is supposed to be different than those who are not in Christ. We don't supposed to allow people who are not in Christ to counsel us and to cause us to operate outside of, of the principles and the scriptures and the word of God. We supposed to be different. We don't supposed to approach a situation or a person the same way as an unbeliever would. Uh, somebody who's negative or who is judgmental and all of that. We don't supposed to do that. We, we, we supposed to have Christ in us. We, we are supposed to be light. We supposed to be soft. And there are people that I have built business relationships with that other people had something negative to say about, right? But I did not allow their experience with the person to discourage me from being the man of God that I'm called to be to this individual. Guess what happened? I began to build a business relationship with these individuals, right? And now I am reaping the harvest of the relationship that was built between me and them. And they had a lot of respect for me just as much as I had respect for them. And I didn't allow personal relationships with other people to detour me and to cause me to prejudge the person without getting to know the person. Watch this. Now, God has blessed me to be reaping some of the harvest from the relationships that he allowed me to build with these people in business. Whereas I would have been missing out on what God had intended for me had I listened to the naysayers. And many of you uh, that are in business, that, that are believers, you're listening to naysayers. You're listening to negative people. Sometimes some people got too much influence in our lives. They got too much influence in our lives. And yet these people don't have good reputations. These people don't have good names. And yet we take their word. We believe what they say uh, 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 over an opportunity to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. And, and let me remind you that, that, that the business world, even though there's a lot of businesses in the world, the business world is small. So you don't know who know who. You don't know who's connected to who. So, and, and the truth of the matter is people, people, they pay attention to your company, your personal company. See, your personal company, who you, who you keep company with, who you hang out with, who you socialize with, who you connect with. Your personal company has a lot to do with your company's reputation. See, this is what we don't understand. See, how can you expect your company to have a good name? 
if your personal connections and relationships with people don't have a good name. Teach Gary. I know this is Mr. Favor talking, but uh, teach Gary. See, 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 we hang out with people that don't have a good reputation. And we wonder why our companies don't have good reputations. And we wonder why our companies are not the ones that people choose to do business with. Because it is our circle. It is our choice of friends. It is our choice of who we connect with that is hurting our business name. See, it is it is the association of people that don't have good names that is hurting our business names. And for some reason, for the life of me, you can't tell these people. There are some people out here, you, you will come out better talking to a tree. You will tell them that they ignore you. They don't want to hear you. This is my business. This is my company. You don't tell me what to do. But at the same time, you ain't producing. At the, at the same time, you ain't expanding. At the same time, your, your company name doesn't have a good name, doesn't have a good reputation. Uh, but you do what you want to do. <laughs> you understand? All you can do is help. So that's why I encourage these new upcoming business owners. Come on in. Bring, bring something different to the table. Operate in integrity. Operate in honesty. Don't be named among the thieves. Don't be named among those who don't have good reputations as it relates to following instructions and, and, and doing what you want to do and all that kind of stuff. Don't be among those. You come in with some fresh ideas. Come in with, um, I mean, come in with vision. Uh, 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 I mean, come in with vision. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, yes, sir, B. God bless you, bruh. We got a we got a witness and a praise report on on the comment section. There it is, right there. Um, and so these, you know, we need more people to step out and bring something fresh, something new. Uh, hard work, guys. Hard work. You don't have to steal. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to take away. You don't have to try to compete. Uh, you don't have to tear down one guy in order to make yourself look good. You don't have to do all of that, guys. Go to work. Uh, give it your 100%. Uh, do the best you can. Don't try to uh, outdo. Don't try to prove. Uh, don't try to prove something to somebody. You know, you do it because this is what you're called to do. Do it because this is what you are gifted and assigned to do, guys, because that's the only way you're going to make an impact, man. Help people, man. This is how you get blessed. Help people. Help people. It ain't taking nothing away from you. It's actually going to add to you. It's actually going to help you. Don't, don't, don't sit back and wait and watch for somebody to fail. Don't sit back and wait on somebody to, to mess up so that you can sit back and laugh and make fun. I don't understand the mindset of a lot of business owners, man. I'm telling you. Uh, I, I, I'm telling you. I don't understand. I mean, I hear, I hear these conversations going on, and I get away from them. Because I'm sitting there like, neither one of y'all is trying to help anybody. All you do is talk about people and you ain't no better than everybody else because we all in the same business. <laughs> and so I don't understand that. If, if it's in my power, because I know where the Lord brought me. I know what I did not have. I know when I started the first go around, I made some bad choices. Things didn't go right back in 2003. And, and, and I wish I had made some decisions. And it was a lot of those guys. It was a lot of those guys 
that they would not tell me anything. They knew where the work was. They wouldn't help me. Um, see, see, guys, I don't just talk about the successes. I talk about the bad times, too, because I don't think we can help anybody until we tell the whole truth and the whole story. Um, and, and, and there's no shame in my game. You understand what I'm saying? Because people laughed at me. They, 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 they knew that I was, they knew that I was struggling as it relates to trying to find work and they laughed at me. They wouldn't tell me nothing because they wanted to control my business. They wanted to tell me what I need to do and di this and that. And, and some of the people, they got mad because I wanted to start it, start my own business and I wouldn't drive for them. And you got those out there that they want you to drive for them and work for them. They don't want you to branch out because you become competition. See, as long as you're a driver, you cool, you good. But when you branch out, you become competition, especially when you are well-liked, especially when you have a good reputation uh, uh, with people and, and you have built relationship, both personal and business. They already know what's coming down the pipe. You branch out on your own, they already know. I done been through that, guys. And men, a lot of guys have been through that. But I'm here to tell you, and people ask me all the time, why do you do the things you do? I said, first of all, God has blessed me. I remember when it was hard. Business sometimes can be hard, especially when you're getting started. You're going to have that, that period where you got to struggle. You're going to have that period of time where it seemed like you're going to just be working. You ain't going to see no profit. You're just going to work and just pay bills. And, and, and you're going to have those times to where you feel discouraged. You're going to have those times where you feel like you want to call it quits because you don't see the results that you thought that you would see. Um, but you got to be patient, guys. It's going to take some time because you got to build the foundation. This is like anything uh, as it relates to ministry or whatever. You got to build the foundation of your business. If you want your business to be strong, if you want it to be solid, if you want it to have the ability to endure and outlast, uh, no matter the economic situations and the economic crisis or whatever the economy situation may be, you want a business that can stand. You want a business that can can endure and go through the hard times and the hard seasons. And you want to be able to continue to produce, even though it's hard times, right? So this is what we lack, man. We, we send a lot of people who are, and, and only people, are the, the only people that don't want to help people, the only people that want to sit back and laugh and make fun of other people, those are people who think they have arrived. Those are people who forgot who helped them. Some of them same people that don't want to help nobody. Somebody helped you. Somebody helped you get started. You wouldn't be where you were or you wouldn't be where you are if somebody had, hadn't had helped you. And I think sometimes we forget. We, we start making money. We get to a certain status. And we start be, we start acting superior. We start looking down our noses at other people. And we forgot that we was once an employee. We forgot that somebody gave us a chance too. Somebody gave us a shot. And yet we see people try to blackball other people. Try to give them a bad name among companies so that they won't be able to get no work so that they can be right, wanting you to fail. Done been through all that, guys. I could tell y'all some stories, okay? And it, But yet it's the truth. <laughs> I could tell you some things. And until this day, people don't know that I know what they tried to do. And yet the Christ in me, see, th there it is. This is what makes us different as it relates to Christian businesses. The Christ in me, wouldn't allow me to be angry at them, wouldn't allow them to be mad at them, wouldn't allow me to get them back. You understand? And to this day, many of them don't even know that I know what they tried to do. How when I was down and going through the struggles of life and business, 
how they laughed and they talked about me behind my back. A lot of them don't know I know it. And I even know the ones that portrayed me, the ones that that came off to where they they try to they try to come off like I can confine them and I can trust them. And all the while they was taking my personal and my private business back to the camp among other uh, owner operators and drivers and talking about me behind my back. But you can't allow that stuff to build up in your heart, guys, because you'll walk around with resentment, bitterness, and unforgiveness, and God can't bless you like that. But you know what? Years later, some of those same guys that talked about me, a lot of them ain't even in business anymore. Some of those same guys that was involved in trying to blackball me and try to hinder me. See, this is this is what the Lord would do. He'll turn the tables and he'll bless you. See? And and see, whatsoever a man sow, that's what we gotta reap. You understand? We're gonna reap what we sow. And it may take years down the road, but we're gonna reap what we sow. And some of those same guys that talked about me and made fun of me and laughed at me. Guess what, guys? The Lord turned the table. Some of those same guys had to call me for work. Some of those same guys had to call me and say, hey, could you use a truck or two? But these were the same guys years back. They laughed at me. They made fun of me. They said I wasn't going to make it. They tried to blackball me. And, and they said all of these things that they told people not to work me in and, 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 and they wouldn't tell me where the work was. Now, now, now I'm getting phone calls every other day. People are calling me, trying to get in touch with me, trying to find information about work. If you, if you do right and if you hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles, God would turn the table. See, God will turn the table. And I can honestly say, there's no animosity, there's no bitterness, there's no unforgiveness. But I also got wisdom and I got sense <laughs> that you don't, you don't, you, you don't share everything God blesses you with, with everybody. Because some people just want to use you for the moment. And once they get what they need, they're going to put you back. They're going to they're gonna put you back where you were before they came back to you. OK, don't be guys. Don't don't be foolish now. Now, you can forgive. Forgiveness don't always mean let people back in. Forgiveness mean I forgive you for what you've done, but forgiveness also causes me to set some boundaries. You got to be held accountable and you can't just, you can't just, you can't just do wrong and just prance back in as if nothing ever happened. Okay. So you got to hold people accountable. And I'm telling y'all, all, all, all newcomers, all new business owners, don't trust everybody. Okay. Be led by God on who to trust, who to confine in. Don't share all of your ideas with everybody. Don't tell everybody your vision because there are vision stealers out here. Okay. They are idea stealers out here. People will steal your idea and try to implement it and try to make it as if it's their own and benefit from it. And then act like they don't know you from a can of paint. So be careful. Pray. You understand? Pray and ask God. <laughs> B said that part. <laughs> yeah, everybody want to know. Everybody want to know what you got going on. Everybody want to know what you doing. Everybody want to know. Uh-uh. You be, you, be, you be selective. You be careful who you talk to. You be careful who you confine, man, because everybody is not for you. And when you start getting blessed, when you start growing, when the Lord start adding to your business and adding to your fleet, you find out who really happy for you, Doc.
You find out who really happy for you. I'm telling you. You got a little warm in here. I done, I done talked myself warm. <laughs> but I'm telling you guys, be careful who you share. Some people, all they want is to know your business. I'm telling you. And all they doing is finding out what your business is so that they can find a way to include themselves into benefiting from what God is blessing you with. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Um, so be careful, guys. Pick, pick your confidants wisely. Those who you can find in, you ought to be able to count them all. You ought to be able to count them on one hand with most of your fingers left. <laughs> you you ought to be able to count. You ought to be able to you ought to be able to count on one person, one person that you can you can actually trust and you can confide in and don't have to worry about it leaking or getting out to somebody else. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you should be able to you should at least have one. With four fingers left. Now you ain't gonna have a bunch of those. And you're gonna have a lot of people to approach you and ask you a bunch of questions. Now, that don't mean they're they don't mean they don't mean they're trustworthy. Alright? But we if if you got one good person that you can confide in and trust, you don't have to worry about your stuff getting out. You bless. Because people like that are hard to come by. Okay. Guys. I had a lot that I had to pull out today. It was a nugget that I I feel like it was necessary to share a lot of this because again, I've been getting a lot of calls. A lot of people been running, um, I've been running into in the gym, at the gas station, restaurant. It don't matter where I be. People be coming up to me and asking me. Uh, they let me know they've been watching the videos and how they've been blessed and encouraged and inspired. Um, and so I just felt the burden to just share this nugget today because I've been getting a lot of, a lot of complaints. I've been getting a lot of people complaining about the negativity and the discouragement and, and, um, and we don't want to discourage nobody guys. You know what I'm saying? It's enough out here for everybody, man. If, if, if we all just, if we all just have a heart to, to help, and a heart to share and stop being the crabs in a bucket mentality. It's so much out here to do. Um, and if you take care of God's business, <laughs> I close with this. Now, this is this is the golden goose egg in the bunch. If you take care of God's business first, he'll take care of yours. I'm a living witness. If you put God first and you take care of God's business first, your business will not go lacking. I said your business will not go lacking. God will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. There will be a ram. B, this is for you. There will be a ram in the bush. You don't have to worry about it. God will make sure there's a ram in the book. As a matter of fact, the scripture was talking about as Abraham and Isaac was going up one side of the mountain, the ram was coming up the other side to where when Abraham and Isaac got to the top of the mountain to sacrifice, the ram was already in the area. See you, you see, you, see. The truth of the matter is, your provision will be there. All you got to do is show up. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, I said, I said. Sometimes, uh, so, sometimes we won't, we won't get the provision until we show up where the provision is. Because <laughs> you got to remember this provision will always be where purpose is. Because purpose needs provision. 
God provides for his purpose. And if the person meet the pur purpose, the provision will be there. Person, persons, get to where the purpose is and the provision will meet you there. <laughs> I got to get out of here because I feel like I feel like I feel like hollering a little bit. But uh, uh, that's A.G.A. That's his thing. I'll let him I'll let him holler tonight. I'll be sure to let A.G.A. know you, you older people a good holler tonight at 7 p.m. Come on back and join A.G.A. He'll be back tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, for another edition of Back to the Bible. Where has the fellowship gone? Y'all come back and check out my twin, A.G.A. He'll be back tonight. I missed the favor. It's been a joy to share the nugget with you. And as we often say, A.G.A. and I, be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, is walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But we choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, so we can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hey, guys, I want you to know that I love you, and I'm praying for you, and until we meet again, Hey, go meet that purpose. Go on out there and do what God called you to do. Don't be afraid. Don't allow negative influences to stop you and hinder you from building business relationships. And know how to set boundaries between personal and business. All right? Be productive, guys. Fulfill God's plan for your life. This is Mr. Favor, and I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? Peace.